At its core, cancer can be condensed down to the lack of the body's natural immune defenses to get rid of atypical cells prior to them capturing a hold in the body and developing into full-scale cancer. We literally generate hundreds of thousands of cancer cells in our body every day. And every day, our body literally kills all of these cancer cells, which is perfectly normal when the immune system is operating properly. When a normal cell loses control and is unsuccessful in carrying out apoptosis, a usual protocol of programmed cells destruction, the body's immune system is designed to chase it down and annihilate it. If the immune system natural defenses are weakened or damaged, cancerous cells are allowed to continue replicating and spreading until they finally ravage the bodily structure. In other words, throughout our lives, we all get cancer. But most of the time, the body's immune system exterminates it on its own. When the immune system is not working is when complications emerge. PhD German Otto Warburg, the 1931 Nobel laureate in medicine, was the first one to recognize that cancer cells have a unique energy metabolism in comparison to normal functioning cells. He discovered that a cancer cell is anaerobic and does not use oxygen like a healthy cell, but uses glucose for energy through the process of fermentation. The lactic acid created by this diminishes the cell pH and impairs the capability of DNA and RNA to control cell division. Long-term nutrient deficiencies combined with extended exposure to toxins contribute to this oxygen deprivation in a cell, and when a cell becomes oxygen deprived, it will always lead to dysfunctions in the cellular mitochondria. The following inevitable drop in ATP creation, coupled with immune system degradation, creates the ideal scenario for cancer to start spreading and invading other organs. In other words, full-blown cancer. Cancer actually wasn't all that common over 100 years ago. In the early 1900s, 1 in 20 people developed cancer, while today, it's 1 out of 3. And while some scientists remain confused on this subject, the field of epigenetics, which was the direct result of the work carried out by the Human Genome Project, was demonstrated that epigenetic modulation performs an essential act in biological longevity and cellular breakdown, showing environmental factors and dietary intake can regulate gene expression. In other words, your diet, lifestyle, and environment you live in have a significant impact on your health and whether you'll develop cancer or not. In fact, multiple scientific studies have shown that a poor diet by itself can cause cancer. And considering the modern American diet largely consists of prepackaged foods, sugars, refined grains, junk food, vegetable oils, and hydrogenated oils, it's not surprising that cancer rates continue to skyrocket with some specific cancers actually increasing at younger ages. Based on current trends, the American Cancer Society even predicts that by 2030, the incidence rates among people ages 20 to 34 will increase by 90% for colon cancer and by 124.2% for rectal cancer. Now, getting any type of cancer diagnosis can understandably be extremely traumatizing, especially considering conventional cancer treatments conjures up images of cut, burn, and poison and can include invasive and limited approaches. For example, when surgery is performed to cut out a tumor, the patient is usually told that they are now cancer-free. Yet, the cancer then comes back, sometimes much later. Almost half of all cancer patients encounter growth of metastasis following the extraction of the initial tumor. In fact, a growing body of scientific evidence has revealed that cancer surgery can even increase the risk of metastasis because the removal usually disturbs the stability of the tumor along with the blood vessels nourishing the tumor which can cause an unblocked scattering of cancer cells into the bloodstream and potentially the seeding of those cancer cells directly into other parts of the body. The irony is that quite often the metastatic recurrence can be even more deadly than the initial tumor. Another example is the use of chemotherapy, which has actually been shown to sometimes make the cancer become increasingly aggressive and destructive. 
In fact, a 2009 paper out of China that was published in the journal BioEssence Hypothesis describes how chemotherapy is actually more damaging than receiving no treatment at all because it doesn't attack the cancer in such a way that goes for the jugular, allowing it to strengthen. All living things, malevolent or not, want to protect their survival and can become stronger and more aggressive as a result. Not surprisingly, according to a study conducted by the Department of Radiation Oncology at Northern Sydney Cancer Center, the actual impact of chemotherapy on a 5-year survival in American adults was a lowly 2.1%. This means that approximately 98% of the credit for survival was attributed to other types of treatments. However, if you have a cancer diagnosis, don't despair. There's emerging scientific evidence as well as new and overlooked research coming out from all over the world that shows cancer can be effectively treated and fully reversed. The successful application of an effective cancer protocol incorporates empirical science about the root cause of disease with a logical understanding of how cancer works in the body. In other words, getting to the root cause of the problem as opposed to treating the symptoms. In today's video, Nature Crazy goes over 7 science-based protocols for reversing cancer naturally. Keep in mind that each type of cancer has a unique approach and different protocols are specific to certain stages and types of cancer. For this reason, it is strongly recommended that cancer patients work with an expert or holistic doctor in their main treatment protocol for support. 1. Consider using the Budwig Diet Protocol, which was initially introduced in 1951 by a German biochemist named Dr. Johanna Budwig. Dr. Johanna Budwig also has a doctorate in physics, a PhD in natural science, and was the central government senior expert for fats and pharmacology. In her research, she found that the blood of severely ill cancer patients was lacking in two types of naturally occurring fat molecules that are essential for normal cell division. By comparison, these two fat molecules called phosphatides and lipoproteins were always found in sufficient amounts in the blood of a healthy person. During her studies, she found that when these substances were restored in the body for a time frame of at least three months, the tumors gently diminished, fragility and deficiency of red blood cells vanished, and the patient's energy levels returned. Symptoms of cancer were gone and those with diabetes and liver problems had those issues relieved as well. Dr. Budwig then determined that eating a combination of cottage cheese, flax seeds, and flaxseed oil was an all-natural way for people to replace those essential substances in their bodies. Combining them together would make the lipids water-soluble, thus allowing them to flow freely and be distributed to all the cells in the body. By merely consuming a combination of cottage cheese and flax seeds, the cancer completely regressed in case after case. Across a 50-year time period, Dr. Budwig and those who studied and reported on her work had recorded over a 90% success rate on 4,500 cancer patients. Dr. Budwig's groundwork has a rippled effect on shaping the scientific and medical community and has influenced the study of the effects of fats and oils on the body with current scientific studies showing that polyunsaturated fatty acids like omega-3 found in flaxseed exert anti-cancer activities. Two, consider the Rick Simpson Hemp Oil Protocol. The cannabis plant or hemp plant, which is also referred to as marijuana, had actually been used for medicinal purposes for thousands of years before it became listed as a Schedule One drug in the United States. However, with new scientific literature coming out on the plant and breakthroughs in various countries such as Brazil, whose government has recently approved its use as a treatment for cancer, the shared mood has been altering in the U.S. in regards to its use. The National Cancer Institute, part of the U.S. Department of Health, now declares that cannabinoids, a category of compounds present in cannabis, can inhibit cancer by prompting cell death and hindering blood vessels imperative for tumor growth, and goes on to clarify that cannabis has been shown to kill cancer cells in lab experiments. Dr. Cristina Sanchez, a molecular biologist from Complutense University in Madrid, Spain, was the first to discover the anti-tumor effects of cannabinoids. 
her team found that when the type of brain tumor was treated with cannabinoids, the THC killed the cells in the vitro. Sanchez and other scientists have since determined that the most powerful anti-tumor effects happen when THC and CBD are combined with a multitude of studies having been carried out on lung, prostate, colon, pancreatic, liver, bladder, cervical, brain, and other forms of cancer. In short, when THC attaches to the CB1 or CB2 cannabinoid receptor site on the cancer cell, it causes a boost in ceramide which inhibits the mitochondria and thus closes off power to the cancer cell. Inhibiting the mitochondria causes a discharge of cytochrome C and reactive oxygen species into the cytosol, forcing cancer cell death. The increase in ceramide also disrupts calcium metabolism in the mitochondria, completing the demise to cell destruction. A healthy functioning cell does not create ceramide in the presence of THC and is therefore unaffected by the cannabinoid. In other words, unlike chemotherapy that targets everything in the body, cannabinoids target specifically tumor cells and thus have no toxic effects on normal non-tumoral cells. One of the best parts about its use is that even when the cancer is gone, CBD is still at work repairing the anatomy by turning off the LD-1 gene which is the gene responsible for the growth of metastatic lesions, meaning that treatment with cannabinoids not only kills cancer through numerous simultaneous pathways, but helps prevent metastasis or the development of secondary malignant growths, a win-win. Because cannabinoid therapy is still relatively new in the mainstream, a current challenge for patients regarding its use is lack of regulation. This may change in the future, but until then, make sure to get out to a legal state or country if you do choose to utilize this protocol. Three, another protocol involves utilizing a glycoprotein known as GCMAF, which stands for Vitamin D-Derived Binding Protein Microphage Activating Factor. The GCMAF protocol is a microphage activating therapy used to galvanize the immune system and stimulate microphages so they can terminate cancer cells and other abnormal cells in the body. This works by a process known as phagocytosis, which is essentially the immune system's way of infulging cancer cells. GCMAF is actually a natural occurring protein that our bodies produce to fight off a number of diseases including cancer. Even when in good healthy people makes tons of cancer cells a day, but there's GCMAF, which has 11 discovered actions that include multiple attacks against cancer, demolishes them every day. In other words, GCMAF empowers your body to defend and heal itself. However, in unhealthy individuals with non-functioning immune systems, it is typically depleted which allows malignant cells to circulate an enzyme called nagalase that stops the creation of your GCMAF. As a result, illness becomes chronic and cancer cells are allowed to replicate unhampered. Luckily, nagalase doesn't destroy GCMAF, it only stops the creation of it, which is why intravenously administering it is effective for patients with cancer. Clinical studies have demonstrated that the administration of GCMAF to cancer patients has many benefits including the enhanced immune response and higher levels of palatate in red blood cells. Also, clinical studies have shown repressed cancer growth by inhibiting blood vessels that are fueling tumor growth and reduction in tumor receptors involved in metastasis. Some patients that were deemed as having incurable cancer were also given GCMAF. Even with a cancer at a much later stage of progression, they showed successful anti-cancer immunotherapy success. Some of the results included the absolute eradication of cancer following a six-month treatment and others displayed a reduction of nagalase activity and tumor size. As of right now, GCMAF treatment is not available in the United States, and clinics in Japan are the only place where treatment is currently available besides a trial recruiting participants in Israel which makes it an impossible option for some. With that said, products from medical organizations can be purchased and there are natural compounds you can utilize that contains amounts of GCMAF. For example, a study demonstrated bovine colostrum-derived components have been found to activate GCMAF, and a specific type of probiotic yogurt is now being utilized for its health benefits on activating GCMAF.
Either way, make sure you do your research on this therapy. As of 2016, on the American National Library of Medicine alone, over 150 renowned scientists from eight different nations have republished 73 major GCMAF research papers, so there's lots of great information to pick up. This can be viewed on the U.S. government's PubMed system. Four, another popular protocol to consider is the Simnon Sinai method, which is predominantly utilized for cancers of the throat, intestines, colon, rectal area, and other cancers of the digestive tract. It was established by an Italian oncologist named Dr. Simnon Sinai, who first identified analysis that demonstrated that all rooted cancers have a collective trait. The commonality shared between them was that they were all jointly held in place by a fungus also known as Candida. He observed that the fungus essentially created an acid-based stickum that glued it and the cancer cells together. All healthy cells continue functioning until they are no longer feasible and their scheduled self-destruct mechanism, also known as apoptosis, is activated. The problem here is that the fungus produces toxicants that openly obstruct the normal program cell destruction sequence, prompting an unqualified increases in cell reproduction. In other words, the fungus or candida operates similarly to a sticky or adhesive substance that glues the cells together while interfering with healthy cell death protocols and as a consequence, the cells don't self-destruct, but uncontrollably proliferate until the body cannot sustain itself. Dr. Simonson realized that baking soda or sodium bicarbonate had the capability of swiftly dissolving the glue holding these unhealthy cells together by neutralizing its acid base, thus counteracting the cancer. In addition to sodium bicarbonate, alkalizing the body the bicarbonate ion has a collective negative charge, meaning it directly draws out the acid hydrogen ions in the cells, enabling vital minerals to swap out the partly toxic acid. As a result, the body is able to restore its necessarily biological defenses. He personally claimed a 90% success rate for most patients with a 10% failure rate due to bone cancers since his team was unable to come up with a way of getting the baking soda inside the bone. He also noted that the sodium bicarbonate cancer treatment and AHCO3 was well tolerated even when frequent repeated dosing. Medical scientists have since published vindication by showing that consumption of sodium bicarbonate does increase the pH of tumors and slow the formation of spontaneous metastasis in metastatic breast cancer mouse models. For the last two decades, John Hopkins has also recognized the increasing frequency of severe fungal infections in patients with neoplastic diseases, and research carried out a few years ago showed that the drug itraconazole, a commonly used to treat toenail fungus, can also block angiogenesis, the growth of new blood vessels commonly seen in cancers, which also supports the thesis that fungus overgrowth plays a strong role in cancer overgrowth. Make sure to find excellent support if considering this type of protocol. Five, consider the cayenne pepper protocol, which is also referred to by many as the dirt cheap protocol, hence it is the being the less expensive method on this list. This protocol is mainly for people who cannot afford or cannot obtain due to living in a foreign country some of the other recommendations. Nevertheless, capsaicin, the active ingredient in cayenne pepper, has been shown to have tumor repressive effects in many clinical studies. Capsaicin, an alkaloid found in plants of the genus Capsicum and the vital hot component of chili peppers that's often described by its acrid vapors and fiery taste. In 2004, Dr. Sanjay K. Srivastava and colleagues at the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine found that capsaicin induced apoptosis in pancreatic cells through BIM activation. In other words, they determined that capsaicin interfered with mitochondrial behavioral and triggered programmed cells destruction in cancerous cells without negatively impacting healthy pancreatic cells. The research study published in the Innovations Report, in which Dr. Srivastava stated it had potential use as a novel chemotherapeutic agent for pancreatic cancer. And as stated in more recent research, capsaicin also impedes the expansion of breast cancer cells. The study was performed with a SUM149PT cell structure, a model system for a specifically assertive type of breast cancer, the triple negative type. 
The scientists found the existence of olfactory receptors, also known as transient receptor potential channels, TRPV1, on the tumor cells and activated them by adding capsaicin to a cell structure. The outcome was the tumor cells began to replicate much slower and began to die in enormous amounts. The remaining cancer cells capability to progress and metastasize or spread alternate growth away from the main location greatly reduced. There have also been several clinical studies conducted in Japan and China that showed capsaicin specifically impedes the growth of leukemic cells as well. As you can see, cayenne pepper benefits have scientifically proven their worth. If you do choose to add cayenne pepper to your regimen, make sure to use a high quality brand from a reputable company. 6. Consider the potential of hydrazine sulfate, HS, an extremely cheap, widely available compound. The use of hydrazine sulfate won't necessarily rectify cancer by itself, but it will provide the cancer patients suffering from cachexia an extended life while they are undertaking other practical treatments. It was initially introduced as an anti-cancer vehicle based on a study by Dr. Joseph Gold, an American research oncologist, now the Syracuse Cancer Research Institute. The research carried out demonstrated that it successfully impeded an enzyme called gluconeogenic phosphonyl pyruvate carboxykinase. Gold extrapolated that this enzyme played an important role in gluconeogenesis and proposed that inhibition of this enzyme would interfere with this process and thus minimize the severity of cachexia, the wasting away of a cancer patient's body. In clinical studies, he demonstrated the use of hydrazine sulfate resulted in increased appetite and reduced weight loss, and thus recommended that it be used as an adjuvant therapy to interrupt cachexia. Remember the substance of cancer is lactic acid, and the immense quantity of lactic acid created by the fermentation of glucose from cancer cells is then transferred to the liver. This redesign of glucose to lactate produces a lower, more acidic pH in cancerous tissues and drains the stores of glucose which fatigues the body. This is neither an effective way or sustainable way to create energy, and is one of the reasons why many advanced cancer patients lose weight and become very weak. They are almost always guaranteed to have cachexia. And because cachexia hijacks the energy and causes the appetite to become scarce, many times it is what ultimately kills the cancer patient. Since hydrazine sulfate inhibits the key enzyme in the liver that allows lactic acid to be converted into glucose, it blocks cancer's access to the glucose so it critically demands and thus increases the cancer patient's energy and weight which is especially vital in the last stages of cancer. Since Dr. Gold's original research, there has since been many studies demonstrating the anti-cancer activity of hydrazine sulfate published in leading peer-reviewed cancer journals all over the world. Seven, conventional medicine for individuals with cancer has typically been geared towards surgery, dietary modification, chemotherapy radiation, and or oral agents. However, the Human Genome Project, which gave birth to the field of epigenetics, has transformed the way we understand biology and medicine. Science has now shown us that the human body is not just a biological machine, but more of a vibrational energy force governed by quantum physics, hence the success of the placebo effect. Quantum physics is now showing us that in addition to the bloodstream and neuron impulses, the body is sustained by a flux of subtle light sound vibration energy. Energy aware professions and cultures have often referred to these energy fields as acupuncture meridians, chakras, and chi. The formation of these high frequency energies starts in the embryo before the bodily development of the organs and are recognized in the fully matured body. In other words, subtle energy fields play a major role in the functioning of the physical body. As a result, energetic medicine, meditation, and prayer are now finally becoming recognized by Western medical science, and even some hospitals are recommending daily meditation or prayer and are even allowing Reiki practitioners or acupuncturists to work on patients in the hospital for healing purposes.
And while there have been a plethora of studies and reports demonstrating the potential measurable health benefits associated with meditation, prayer, yoga, and other spiritual or energetic practices, the Spontaneous Remissions Project organized by Institute of Noetic Sciences is the biggest scientific support of these types of healing actions. It has indexed the world's medical scientific findings on the subject of spontaneous remissions, which has resulted in the most extensive repository of medically reported cases of spontaneous remissions in the world, with no more than 800 journals in 20 different languages. To date, they have collected over 3,500 case studies reported in the medical literature about people who have undergone spontaneous remissions from apparently incurable diseases. The majority of these case studies revolved around people with stage 4 cancers who declined conventional treatment or were given treatment deemed by conventional doctors to be inadequate for cure. And while some medical doctors remain baffled by these remissions, the results of the Human Genome Project that showed positive action can repair damaged genes tells us that these people were able to heal themselves by releasing suppressed emotions, increasing positive feelings through meditation or prayer, following their intuition, embracing social support, deepening their spiritual or consciousness energy connection, taking action in their life to correct issues they have never confronted before, and if applicable to their situation, correcting trauma they may have experienced in their life at a time they developed the disease. It is also estimated that for every published case of radical remission, there are at least 100 more that go unpublished. Either way, the spontaneous remission's results definitely make a case for ensuring that every cancer treatment should include not only the basics but also the necessary treatments that these exceptional people embrace in their own healing journeys. These are our top 7 protocols for reversing cancer and taking back control of your health. We hope that you found this information helpful in your journey and we also encourage you to check out the additional links at the bottom of the page to other scientific studies and helpful resources and protocols for reversing the disease. If you want updates on cutting edge hair, skin, anti-aging, and health tips, just subscribe to this video below and check out our website at naturecrazy.com. Also, if you like this video, please share it with others you care about or know could benefit from this information as we all probably know someone that has been affected by this disease. Thanks for watching and have a great day.